Welcome to another Stompy 51 miniature adventure. If you've been watching these videos and you'd like to make sure you get all the latest ones, please do subscribe for more. We'll be looking at some Kev Adams goblins unpainted, a kind of unboxing, as well as some I actually managed to get round to painting. I've always loved goblins, especially old school goblins, as epitomised by this painting by Paul Bonner. If you haven't got his art book, Out of the Forests, get it. And when it comes to old school goblins, my favourite are those sculpted, hand sculpted by Kev Adams, widely and better known as the Goblin Master. He even has his own website these days. Oh, that's it, the Goblin Master Online. He did a lot of the uh, goblins for Warhammer Fantasy Battle from days of yore, I think the very early 90s, possibly even the late 80s. But as his website explains, he's been doing this for over 35 years, and not just for GW, but he's gone independent for a range of little companies, doing goblins of all manner of different types. And he's done a fair few different, slightly off-the-wall, unique species of goblins. These are some sea goblins he sculpted for 4A miniatures you can get at the moment on eBay. I'm not sure they really float my boat, and I couldn't really imagine ever getting them. Or could I? Hmm. Shiny. But no, let's focus. Today we're going to talk about the goblins that I got from Impact Miniatures from the Kickstarter a few years ago. Basically, there was a company called Heartbreaker Miniatures. Kev Adams designed a lot of goblins and orcs for them. But unfortunately, Heartbreaker kind of went fut. And when they went fut, a particular dude got the license. But then unfortunately, he died. Um, and Impact Miniatures approached the estate and said, look, can we take them off your hands and we'll get them cast up. But not as metal, but using our kind of new proprietary spin cast resin approach which kind of keeps the costs down in a world of crazed commodity prices i mean you can still get them in metal from reaper miniatures uk but i got mine from the impact miniatures kickstarter a few years back and you can still get them from the states on the impact miniatures website and ooh. The Kev Adams orcs are pretty good too. Anyway, focus. And because I was so enamoured with these models, I actually bought two sets from Impact Miniatures in the Kickstarter. And I've got one painted and one not yet painted. So let's start with the one that is not yet painted. So kind of unboxing. So he's clearly the boss dude with very heavy armour for a goblin. I mean, I must say, looking at them, I'm reminded of the rules in Saga, you know, a Dark Ages game, where basically the standard gumps, you know, most people in your village who are told to go and fight, even if they are warriors, are just given a spear and a shield and then get hold of any armor at all, like a helmet, they've done well. It's only what in the orc system, I suppose you would call the knobs, or you would call the huskars, whatever, you know, the dudes, the small handful of actual professional warriors around your Thane, your boss dude. Only they get this kind of weaponry. Whereas Kev, Kev Adams, has given each of these goblins a beautiful shield, a beautiful sword, all manner of uh, ornaments and jewellery and things. And, you know, a fair bit of you know, beautiful kind of capes, a bit of armour, you know, quite, quite high-end kind of stuff. And the character, look at the character, I mean, he looks just mischievous. He looks like one of my kids. Let's leave him over there. And we might as well talk about the spin cast resin, actually. So, I mean, look at this. It's pretty good stuff. Nothing happens. Solid as a rock. Great stuff with swords. I mean, it does sometimes... It, a few of these did snap under foolish duress. But you can say, could I have packaged them a bit better? And when I kind of um, push them into these bases, 
sometimes like a foot would break off, but we're talking about less than 10%. And I could have been a bit more careful. And now you've been warned, you've been warned. But I mean, look at that, that's a, a spear and that's pretty good, pretty solid. I mean, look, metal is not all that solid, albeit it doesn't break, because it, you know, unless you really bend it. So this is another Killer Adams miniature. So although these are the former Heartbreaker miniatures, these are, I think, the Harlequin miniatures now with black tree designs. And, uh, you know, these are pretty compatible. But look, you know, in terms of you bend it, it bends. It won't break. So, you know, spin cast resin, not too bad. He's a boss dude. Albeit he looks a bit kind of high fantasy. I have to think of what to use him for. I'm thinking of putting him on a chariot. So, because I'm a bit of a nervous type, the, um, the goblins with longer spears, I did kind of give those away, because although I think they probably won't break, I was just worried they would. The other thing is, is that you've got to think carefully about the um, undercoats you put on. I think if you spray them with normal Games Workshop uh, undercoats, or the Army Painter undercoats, I think it just flakes off. So I use Halford's uh, matte car spray, you know, because it's it's basically like a a renaissance, I've forgotten the name of the kind of painting, you know, where they used to kind of plaster a wall and then paint the wall and the, the, the paint would kind of fuse into the um, into the plaster, which meant it was, you know, now a permanent piece of plaster and it, it would never kind of degrade or not really degrade. Not that I'm a big history of art buff, but you know what I mean. So this is the same kind of principle. He's actually one of the champions in the set. But, you know, look at the detailing on the armour. It's beautiful. Loads of character. And as I've got them to hand, that's a Pedro Ramos sculpted. Not wizard, what are they called? Like a team manager or something for Blood Bowl as part of a kind of a, a kind of half rat man, half goblin team, the underworld. Rotters, whatever they're called, but I think he will be a perfectly good wizard and again possibly put onto a chariot. I think he's supposed to be kind of pointing to his blood bowl uh, tactics, you know, where they do the kind of the arrows showing how they're going to do their American football round the enemy type thing. But you know, I'll just put some kind of weird maybe chaos sign over there just to show that he's broadening his mind, you know. Uh, an open mindset to different kinds of evil magic. You know, dwarves, you know, dwarves close-minded, goblins, more, more open to new ideas. Or maybe actually he's just like a, a goblin Moses with his goblin Ten Commandments. And there's another Harlequin metal that I just happen to have. And although it's also Kev Adam sculpted, so I think perfectly compatible, he is a bit smaller and a bit weedier and looks a bit different. Now, as they say in all of the top cookery shows, here's one I made earlier. The focus here as a theme of this kind of series of, of videos that I've been doing on YouTube is to try and find that right balance of actually getting through the lead and spin cast resin plasticky pile, working out what to paint, what not to paint in terms of each miniature, where not to go overboard, where to kind of focus you know, everyone always says faces and bases, and that largely is what kind of happened here. So with the skin, I made a little bit more of an effort and did sort of, sort of three or four layers, starting with one of the darker New Games Workshop greens, can't remember the name, and then mixing in a little bit of elf flesh, teeny bits and uh, bits of this much lighter kind of, kind of Gretchen-y kind of green type color but starting with quite a dark base. Maybe it's too dark, but at least you know these are green skins. So they're kind of more Lord of the Rings green than 1980s Games Workshop green. And then I just, you know, picked out with only one, maybe two colours, things like the teeth, things like, you know, wood or armour were, you know, two layers basically, just to keep it simple. Same actually with the red, it's only two layers, but then People hit shields, so I just kind of did a few flicks here and there to imagine where there's been a bit of a scrape. 
And as mentioned before, these guys are pretty heavily armoured for a bunch of little gobbos. He's a character, albeit I think he's in direct competition with the boss, who is the most heavily armoured fellow over there. And I've got this kind of rust effect, uh, which I mix a little bit of water into and then just use my thumb to kind of smear about a bit, just to make it look a bit worn. The black, as you can see, is literally two layers and you can probably barely see the highlight. Same with the le the various leathers. I had a few different kind of browns just to give a bit of colour, but they are barely uh, layered up. You know, they're one or two layers. Sometimes a bit of a dry brush. I don't really have a good quality uh, gold type colour. I mean, I think this is Sycorax bronze from Y Games Workshop, but I just do one layer and then do a kind of red and black mix uh, wash over it. But it doesn't ever look quite right. But the thing is, my thinking is, in most systems, you know, these are going to be a unit of 12 and they're not going to do very much except get squished because they're not going to be your high-end fighters. So there's only so much effort you want to put in. Albeit they've got so much character, they could probably be used for, you know, something like well, Mordheim or, or one of the other kind of skirmish games. But let's just go through them one by one. So you've got a dude with... It's not a morning star, I can't remember what it's called. Look at all the character on his face. Eager to please the boss. He's just smashing the two symbols together like a madman encouraging his mates to go to battle from behind. He looks quite menacing, actually, in very 1990s. You know, they call him Two Choppers Bob. And he's just the, the juve of the Federation here, working his way up the ranks, learning on the job. Nothing wrong with that. And I think me and the Goblins' as boys will leave it there for today. Please do like, comment and subscribe in the usual way. Drop me a line and let me know on the uh, video comments what your favourite goblins are. Maybe you don't like goblins. Maybe you're an orcs kind of guy. But either way, wherever you are, keep well, keep safe and I hope to see you soon.